A Bitcoin miner heat-stroked in his sleep. This is how his organs shut down. CW is a 23-year-old man presenting to the emergency room unconscious. His mother Karen tells the admitting nurse that she found her son slumped over in his bed, unresponsive. He had been acting funny over the last few days. You see, CW had just graduated college two months ago. He got a degree in engineering, but from a minor Midwestern state school. The year was 2011. The US was just coming out of recession. The banks had gotten bailed out again. Whatever wealth was left was concentrating on the coasts, and the effects on recent college grads in 2011 in this region were clear. No new engineering projects were to open in decrepit flyover country. As the economy tumbled, CW started reading about a new project called Bitcoin. At first, he wasn't sure what it was all about. Paper money and fiat currency bad, he was told. At the time, he couldn't take it too seriously, but he could run the program on his computer. It would do math problems and confirm Bitcoin transactions, and he would get new coins every day just from doing this. At first, he did this for gags and laughs. Just the year before, in 2010, someone sold 10,000 Bitcoins for $50, and another person paid 10,000 Bitcoins for two pizzas. But just a year later, one Bitcoin was worth 20 US dollars. CW couldn't get a job after graduating college, but maybe he didn't need one. He already had thousands of Bitcoins, and if the price kept increasing, all of this would be more money than he'd get as an engineer. He mined as much Bitcoin as he could. He built more computers with the fanciest graphics cards he could get. The more computers running Bitcoin, the more coins he could mine. The more he could overclock his graphics cards, the more coins he could mine. And the more coins he could mine, the more money he'd make. He became obsessed. <laughs> As the summer continued, a heat wave started going through the city. At first, CW procrastinated in installing air conditioning. His parents' house didn't have central air, so they had to install window units every year. But things seemed okay. CW would sit in his room in a tank top with fans blowing everywhere. His rigs were running hot, but no problem. He was making good money. One day, his room was over 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Usually, CW would feel exhausted and tired in summertime, so this wasn't out of the ordinary. One morning, CW woke up nauseous. He got out of bed and instantly felt dizzy. It was hard sleeping the last few days with his Bitcoin rigs running loud and hot all throughout the night. As the day passed, CW couldn't eat or drink anything because he'd feel like throwing it up. And without water, he developed a massive headache and he could feel his eyes pushing out of his skull. He went to bed early, but he didn't wake up. Karen thought something was wrong when she hadn't seen her son all day. As she goes into his room, she instantly felt the heat. She sees her son slouched over on his bed, unresponsive, as she calls for 911, and he's brought to the emergency room where we are now. Given this history of present illness, doctors have a few clues as to what's happening. At examination, CW had tachycardia. Tachy meaning fast, and cardia referring to his heart rate. His heart rate was fast, his breathing rate was fast, but his blood pressure was low. His skin was hot and dry to the touch, and his temperature measured 106 degrees Fahrenheit. You want to be under 100 degrees, meaning that something terrible is happening in his body at the moment, which gives doctors the first clue. CW's belly was swollen, and a blood test finds that all of his organs have started shutting down. Enzymes from the liver were found floating around in his blood. If the liver is supposed to break down chemicals in your body, and it does that breakdown with enzymes, then the reason that those enzymes are floating around in his blood is because his liver cells have started dying, and they're spilling those enzymes into his body as his liver shuts down. Waste products that are usually filtered by the kidneys, one called creatinine, which comes from creatine used by the muscles, was present in blood at a level three times higher than normal. Nitrogens were found too. If they're high in the blood, then the kidneys aren't filtering them. Usually, nitrogen and creatinine have a ratio. When that ratio is high, that could mean that someone is dehydrated. CW didn't drink water over the last few days since he started feeling dizzy and nauseous, so he was dehydrated. But he wasn't conscious to tell anyone this, and this high ratio gives doctors some more clues as to what's happening. If CW is dehydrated and his body temperature is too high, then all of his problems might just be because of heat stroke. But how long has this been happening? It's not good that he's unconscious because it means that not only have his body organs shut down, but that his brain has shut down too. 
medical staff try to cool him down because if they don't, his organs will continue to fail. They submerge his body in ice packs as they try to figure out why his body temperature is so high. CW is only 23 years old. Usually, hyperthermia in a young man can come from overexertion. Working out too hard during a hot and humid heat wave can impair the body's ability to waste heat through sweat. If the air is already saturated with water because of humidity, there won't be a meaningful release of heat from the body through sweat. This can raise the core temperature, but CW wasn't exercising. He was found unconscious in his bed. How about stimulants? Those can increase body temperature. His mom, Karen, wouldn't have known if he had taken anything either, but he didn't have a history of use and the toxicology screen came back negative for everything. Meaning, CW really did heat stroke in his sleep because his overclocked graphics cards that were mining Bitcoin were generating so much heat in his room during a heat wave and wouldn't allow his body to dissipate heat. But wouldn't his body have told him that things were too hot? Wouldn't he have just woken up and gotten out of bed like most people? Not necessarily. CW was dehydrated, but he lost that water in the days leading up to his heat stroke. Heat waves don't just last for one day, they're several days long. He hung around in his room with his overclocked computers mining Bitcoin. He lost water while sweating in his tank top playing video games. He lost water while breathing. And because he was dehydrated when he presented to the emergency room, it means that he didn't drink enough water to make up for the loss. Do you remember that CW's skin was dry and hot to the touch? Well, it's hard to sweat when you're dehydrated, which is probably why he's dry. His heart starts to beat faster and harder to surface blood to the skin to dissipate heat that should have been lost through sweat. Less blood goes to the organs, causing something called ischemia. Isk from an ancient Greek word meaning to hold back, and emia meaning presence of blood. A holding back of blood to the organs as blood pressure starts to drop because blood vessels expand to try to get rid of that heat. And to make up for this, and to keep pressure up, the heart tries to beat faster and harder, but it's not enough. His core body temperature goes up again. Enzymes start to denature because of the heat. It's like these eggs getting cooked as the proteins start to unravel. The body needs those enzymes to break down food, to break down nutrients, to function normally, but they don't work anymore. His organs aren't getting blood flow anymore, so they're getting starved of oxygen. The kidneys can't filter anything anymore. The liver starts leaking enzymes. The brain tries to compensate for this excess heat and decrease blood flow by opening up its blood-brain barrier. This leaks proteins into the brain, but that's not the only thing going in. As those proteins flow in, water follows too, swelling into the brain. This explains CW's headache. As the water presses in, it explains why he felt like his eyes were pushing out of his skull. All of this would be okay, except the brain is enclosed in a hard space, the skull. As the water keeps following the proteins in, the brain swells to a point where it crushes up against the skull. As the medical team checks up on CW, he's starting to cool off, but he's not responsive. Acids are found floating around in his blood, even after aggressive cooling, even after trying to give him fluids, and he's transferred in to the intensive care unit. When he presented to the emergency room, doctors noticed that CW's abdomen was swollen. An abdominal x-ray found that parts of his bowels were dilated. This could mean that something is blocking it. It could be a big deal, but also maybe not. Doctors thought to wait on it. Over the next two days, CW stabilized. His body temperature corrected. His kidneys started functioning again, and things were looking good. Until third day of admission. At morning rounds, doctors found that CW suddenly developed a fever overnight. His heart rate was high again, and his blood pressure was low again. Physical exam revealed that CW's abdomen was still swollen. Another x-ray showed that something was causing his bowels to be dilated. A CT scan showed that the walls of his small and large intestines have thickened, meaning that parts of his guts are no longer alive. But it's not the only thing they found. Scattered fluid and free air had accumulated outside of his intestines into the space where the liver sits, meaning that not only are parts of his bowels not alive anymore, but that a hole was perforated into his guts and the contents were leaking into his abdomen. But if he was dehydrated and heat stroked and his body became like a furnace to shut down his organs, how did that pop a hole in his intestines? Well, this brings us back to ischemia. Without enough blood going to his intestines because he's dehydrated and because his blood pressure is so low, his guts have to adapt. 
Usually, they can survive this, but this increased stress means mitochondria in the cells have less oxygen to work with. Instead of being the powerhouse of the cell, they start to make reactive oxygen species instead. Nitric oxide, like what you'd find in some workout supplements designed to dilate your blood vessels, is generated in his intestines, dilating his colon. The walls of the bowel start to stretch, allowing bacteria to escape, causing endotoxemia. Endo meaning from within, tox referring to toxins, and emia meaning presence in blood. Toxins from the gut, inside the body, floating around in the blood. Extra insults where the leakage was happening build up as the gut keeps swelling until a hole pops in the intestines. CW was immediately sent in for surgery to see what was happening. Surgeons found perforations in his large intestines. What was supposed to be moving through those intestines had leaked into his abdomen. An infective coating was found lining his intestines on the outside along with dead tissue. Surgeons had to remove parts of his bowel and sew together the remaining parts. After surgery, in the recovery room, CW's condition starts to stabilize. No more liver enzymes are found in his blood, his kidney function returns to normal, and his blood pressure and heart rate are just fine, as he seems to make a recovery. He regains consciousness, but at examination, doctors find mild motor dysfunction, meaning that he has some trouble controlling movements. Several months later, at follow-up, doctors find that parts of CW's brain that control movement have atrophied, meaning that they've started to shrink, as is common in heat stroke cases where the person wasn't cooled down in time, just like CW. Although his brain damage was mild, it is permanent, as he vowed to never mine another Bitcoin ever again. Personal details of the case are from my own experiences in 2009, and clinical details of CW's heat stroke case is the one I remember from 2012 Chicago. Heat stroke is serious, and sometimes you don't realize it's happening because your body has adapted to the environment that you've been in regardless of your age. So stay well hydrated in the summertime, stay in the shade, and keep your body cool. Take care of yourself. Thanks so much for watching, and be well.